When we set out on the journey for development of the Super 3, the powertrain is exactly where we started. Initially, we looked towards motorcycle engines, but the modern motorcycle engine quite often has an integrated gearbox, and with that you have to manage things like adding a reverse gear, sequential gears, and quite quickly we began looking at car-derived engines. Within the Ford family, we were able to use the inline three-cylinder Dragon engine. 1500cc with all of the power quite high in the rev range really encourages you to drive the car and engage with it and that felt right for us. From a packaging point of view it's a very small engine block. Within the Super 3 it actually resides under the nose cone not the bonnet. It's positioned exactly behind the center line of the front wheels and that was crucial for us not just from a vehicle dynamics point of view but also visually. For us, a successful proportion of a three-wheeler is one in which the car's body is towed by its front wheels. Quite often within this segment, you see three-wheelers where the body sits on top of the front wheels, and we don't believe that gives the best proportion for the car. The second challenge was car-derived engines aren't typically supposed to be seen. They're not designed to be aesthetically beautiful. We looked at the constraints of the engine and how we would hold that within the vehicle and very quickly realised we can make a display of that. On the front of Super 3, you see two aluminium castings. These aren't aesthetic face plates, these are structural parts of the car. That entire front end is bolt onto the chassis, which gives us great advantages in build and service. The engine mount on the front of the vehicle is highly visible. That strut on the front is a dynamic engine mount holding the engine in place and managing some of the torque reaction. Those castings have more than one function. They also hold the entire corner package of the vehicle. Very early on in the program, we were studying optimum handling and dynamics. We were looking at the geometry and where some of the hard points needed to be on that front corner array, and we discovered two things. Firstly, push-pull rod suspension was the way to go. It reduced unsprung mass and visually gave real interest to the front end. All of the thin pull rod bars and wishbones added a visual complexity, actually quite akin to some of the early century three-wheelers. The second thing we discovered is that the hard points, the uprights and the brake packages needed to be as outboard as possible. On earlier three-wheelers with a wire wheel, that encouraged a very negative offset, pushing that inboard, and the compromise was handling and dynamics. We don't have a wire wheel on this car. Instead, we have a very, very, very positive offset on the wheels. We're particularly pleased with where we've ended up with the wheels and tyres. In order to strike the right balance of proportion to the size of the vehicle, there wasn't an off-the-shelf tyre available, and we were fortunate to be able to work directly with Cooper Avon to develop our own tyre. The 20-inch tyre has a very ballooned sidewall profile. In addition to that, a very sort of traditional grip tread pattern on the tire tread itself. Both of these give a very heritage feel, but when combined with a modern rubber compound, meet all of the speed ratings. This is a car that's capable of 130 miles an hour. And working on the tire development, alongside the development of the corner packages, we were able to really strike the handling balance that we were looking for.